Hello, welcome back. Uh, last time we were talking about uh, that counter cycle. And we were talking about the first step of that counter cycle, which is analyzing monetary economic transactions, okay, between two entities, okay? Now, just some background here, uh, some stuff that we have to cover before we move on to an actual example of that. So this will be like a part two to step one. So last time it was 1.0, this is 1.1. You get the point, okay? Haven't moved on to step two yet, okay, which is journal and all that fun stuff, okay? But here you have a chart of accounts. Chart of accounts is um, you have these main level elements, right? Assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. Stockholders' equity has its own elements, revenues, expenses, dividends, and um, capital and all that stuff, right? So the main level elements, again, are assets, liabilities, stockholders' equity. Then you have different accounts under these main level elements. How does an account fit or how do you classify an account into one of these elements? It has to meet the definition of an asset. Again, assets is what you own, liabilities is what you owe, and then stockholders equity is just the remainder. Okay, the assets minus liabilities equals your stockholders equity. So each account has to fit a definition for one of these elements to be classified under the umbrella of that element. So the chart of accounts is just a list of uh, the accounts that a company may use, okay, that a company may use um, when they're conducting these transactions. So if a company spends cash, then obviously they would make a journal entry that has cash in it, right? So they pick and choose uh, these titles of these accounts, okay? You can pre-number them, you know, assets could be from 100, like 101 for cash, 102 for accounts receivable, 103 for um, uh, inventory, and so forth, okay? Then for liabilities, it might start at 200 uh, for accounts payable, then 201 for uh, notes payable, and so forth. Same for stockholders equity. But they get to, uh, most companies keep it consistent and choose the same names um, uh, for um, for their accounts, okay, under the elements, right, under the main level elements. So that's a chart of accounts, just listing of the accounts that you may use uh, within the company. You can always add more account titles, and that's fine, okay, that's fine. But that's a chart of accounts. Now, moving on to this example um, of transaction analysis. Okay, so here we have this example. On October 1st, CR Bird invests $10,000 cash in an advertising company to be known as Pioneer Advertising Inc. Now, CR Bird is an individual for these transactions, okay, and in accounting. Uh, the personal finances or the personal uh transactions of the individual have to be separate from the transactions of the entity okay so even though this individual is investing ten thousand of his own money into uh this new company pioneer advertising inc now we are putting on the um, uh, the hat of pioneer advertising inc okay so now we're pioneer advertising inc what happened here pioneer advertising inc received ten thousand dollars in cash right ten thousand dollars in cash and um it issued common stock to cr bird now cr bird uh got stock stock is just a piece of paper that says you own some part of this company it's digital now but back in the day and we'll get into this in much later classes you'll get to see what a, um, a stock certificate looks like um but it says you own some part of this company. In this case, it might be 100% um, for the big dogs that we're talking about, the corporations um, that fall under the SEC that are publicly traded and so forth. They might have millions of investors, okay, or millions of owners. So this $10,000 investment might be minute to a big corporation, or if it's a new corporation, this might be a big investment, and this owner will get a bigger percentage ownership right but anyways what happened is cash increased by or assets increased by ten thousand and stockholders equity increased by ten thousand okay that's the main level analysis now we move on to the different accounts assets increased by ten thousand that's true but it was due to the increase in cash that's what we received 
stockholders' equ equity increased by 10,000 uh, due to the issuance of common stock. Remember, investments by stockholders increase stockholders' equity. So it increased due to the increase in the specific account of common stock by 10,000. Now, stockholders' equity is just the residual. Stockholders' equity is going to equal your assets if you have no liabilities because technically you owe the stockholders uh, the money that they invested, right? The money that they invested. In this case, it was 10000 okay? Now, they allow you to use that money so you can grow the company and hopefully um, their stock... Um, determined by the market goes up in value. So this 10,000 could be turned into um, uh, 10 million or so forth for the individual and so forth. Okay. Now I say technically because stockholders can always invest in other companies so they can sell their stock and just dump your company and that's fine. They don't even have to notify you. They can just, you know, deal with a broker and as long as there's somebody willing to buy that stock, then they don't have to uh, deal with you anymore, okay? So they can jump ship. Um, creditors, on the other hand, are a different story. They're more, they're secured because they take on, um, they're secured because um, they don't get dividends, they don't get the perks of uh, stockholders, and it's really difficult to sell these liabilities, okay? Usually, it's going to be sold at a loss. Yes, you can sell liabilities and try to collect your money. Oh, sorry. Um, try to sell these receivables for the creditor on the creditor side uh, their liabilities for you as a company um, that's borrowing this money but they're more secured they might charge interest but they're more secured the farther you move away from the equal sign in the accounting equation the more riskier okay so I say technically for stockholders equity because they don't get paid unless the creditors get paid in the event of bankruptcy or anything like that or if the company tanks creditors get paid first okay that's why it's called the residual for stockholders equity you don't even have to pay stockholders dividends if you don't want to if the company did bad uh for one year don't have to pay dividends okay you only pay dividends if you declare them right but you don't have to declare them so that's the case and then of course common stockholders or preferred stockholders stockholders in general can jump ship if you don't pay them dividends and just sell their stock to whoever is willing to buy it okay so in this case um assets increased stockholders equity increased and hopefully that made sense okay again stockholders equity increased by ten thousand because that's what you technically owe the stockholders okay so they have a claim to your assets and in this case the only asset that we have is cash that increased by ten thousand so guess what they have a claim to that cash of ten thousand okay so cash increases stockholders equity also increased not to be confused with the liability the example I like to use okay the example I like to use assets that's what you own Okay, so let's say assets is like a paycheck, right? Paycheck that you got or just the money in your account. Let's stick with cash because it's simple. The money in your bank account, right? So let's say you have 2000 okay? 2000 in your bank account, cash, money. 500 of that was a bank loan, okay? So that's a liability. Let's say that's 500 okay? Um, so when you... Initially borrowed this amount, they deposited 500 into your amount and into your account. So that's cash, that's an asset, it increases by 500, but liabilities also increase by 500. Now that's a creditor, okay? So you can consider liabilities as like creditors, right? Uh, or they are creditors um, who just want their money. They don't really care about your company, they just want, they just analyze your company to see if you can pay them back their money. Okay, company tanks, company goes up, that's fine, that's great. Okay, if a company goes up and makes more money, that's great for a creditor because they know that they're going to get their money. Um, um, yeah, they know that they're going to get their money. There's a great possibility that you're going to pay them this money back. Uh, so that's great. Okay, they don't really care about you. So consider that as like in your personal life as... Um, credit cards or a bank loan okay they just want their money back right stockholders on the equity hand 
stockholders equity on the other hand it's kind of like your parents okay so your parents may loan you uh 500 okay 1000 uh in this example that i'm talking about is just your take home pay from a job or something but stockholders let's say they loaned you um uh, 500 or they loaned you even 1500 let's even forget about the um the job okay let's just say you're a bum and you're milking your parents which i advise everybody to do milk your parents until they uh you know go to a casket or something like that okay but let's say they loaned you uh fifteen hundred dollars now creditors will take you to court for that 500 if you don't pay them back and in most cases they will win okay they will win now stockholders equity you don't technically have to pay that fifteen hundred dollar back, right? Because I don't know, maybe that fifteen hundred dollars went to like a college education or something like that. What what if you're dumb, right? What if you're dumb or, or maybe you don't like college, maybe you're just boring, maybe you hate your teacher or something like that. Uh college is just not for you, but you know, you still got that fifteen hundred or maybe uh, you live abroad or something like that. You live away from your parents. They just sent you that fifteen hundred dollars loan, and you decided that you're not gonna go to college. You're just gonna party or something like that. Okay. I don't know any parents that take their children to court. Right? They can, but it's kind of like an investment. They believe in you to succeed. Right? They loaned you this money. They. It's risky. They, they, they're they investing in you. They don't know if you're going to be a bad egg or a good egg or anything in between, right? So, they loaned you this $1,500. Technically, in the back of your head, you know that you owe them, but technically, you don't have to pay them. So, it's not really a liability, right? It's not really a liability. If I have the money... Then I will give you something in return. Maybe I'll take you, a uh, parent. I will take you to go eat something, uh, a buffet or something. Um, I don't know. Maybe you'll buy him a house later on in life. Maybe you'll give him a car or something like that. But parents usually don't expect that money back, right? So I like to think of it that way. Okay, now stockholders can, of course, sue and stuff like that, but they can always, you know, invest in other companies, as I say. That's why I say technically you owe them this money, but a lot of things can happen, and stockholders will get a big fat zero sometimes. Okay, they can sue. Good luck with that. Um, if it was like fraud or something like that. Uh, case of fraud then they can sue but if there are things that are out of the control of the company or stock market crashes or something like that stockholders are pretty much uh screwed for lack of a better word um just like your parents are screwed for lack of a better word if they loan you some money they expected it back but you know they're investing in you they believe in you creditors just want their money go on about their business hopefully that explanation makes sense and before i ramble too much uh, i'm gonna get out of here in the next video we'll move on to step two unless somebody has any questions on step one uh also these series are not gonna be for free uh so if you want more detail you gotta pay me baby okay we're talking about money accounting but for the most part we'll have to tackle some general stuff and these series will be free but um in the future um gotta show some support baby gotta show some support all right so i'll see you in the next video peace